Hey everybody, today we're going to look at rotational symmetry. We've been looking at all kinds of symmetry for years, and this one is the type of symmetry that goes around in a circle and it rotates from a point at the center. We can see examples of rotational symmetry all over history from different places to different times. We see symmetry in nature. We see it in architecture. We see it in animals and people and tiles, pottery. We see mandalas created by Buddhist monks. We see contemporary murals on the sides of buildings, chalk art, art that you make with your body. It comes in all shapes and sizes and from many different people around the world. Now let's take a look at another art teacher's blog who has already done this project with her students, Mrs. Keller, Splish Splash Splatter Blog. Rotational symmetry projects that she has done with her students are pictured right here. So that each student made a design. These are abstract rotational symmetry designs and they look complicated, but it's one little piece of the pie, like a pizza slice that you design and then you do a transfer technique to get that same design repeating, repeating, repeating. This project is so popular that there are many art teachers who have already demonstrated this, including art teacher Jess, who did an excellent job demonstrating this project. For this project, we will need drawing paper, pencil, eraser, a black marker, and colored pencils or colored markers. Your choice. Step one, fold your paper in half diagonally three times. First time. Second time. And one more time. Third time. For your design, you're going to get to choose if you want to write a word, maybe your name or something that you love, maybe a positive word, or you could do an abstract design, or it could be a realistic picture repeating over and over. For our class, we get to decide whatever kind of design you would like to repeat again and again. For us, step two is to write your design in one triangle section, your name or your abstract designer picture should start from the center and stretch all the way out, filling the whole entire space of one triangle. Make sure that your design touches the top and bottom lines. Remember, it doesn't have to be a word, but it could be an abstract design or it could be a realistic picture if you'd like to try that too. As I was saying, the top of your design should touch the top of the triangle and the bottom of your design should touch the bottom of the triangle. As she is demonstrating there. Stretch your design, then go over it with that black marker. It needs to be a black marker and preferably a permanent marker if you have one. You'll need another little triangle of thin paper because you're going to repeat the design at every section. You'll need to make a template that you can trace. Here comes this little template triangle, thin see-through paper. Lay it right on top and then trace right over the top of that. This little triangle piece of paper will be what you use to trace in all the other places. Turn your template over and trace your name or your design, whatever your design is, on the front and the back. She's tracing right on the back so she can see through really well from both sides of that one triangle paper. You'll see why in just a moment. 
place the template under your drawing paper so that the word always starts from the center or the design. Trace over the letters or the design so that that inner corner is always in the inner corner. You'll need to flip the triangle so that that first inner section always stays at the inner section. If you're making an abstract design, it would be a good idea to really take note of which corner is from the center. Place your design template underneath each section and trace it on top with your black marker. We are going to be coloring our projects with complementary colors seen right here. We've learned about the color wheel. We know primary colors and secondary colors. And last week we learned about tertiary colors, those in-between colors. Now see this line with the purple and the yellow? Those are called complementary colors because they are right across from each other on the color wheel. Red and green are complementary. And let's see, what else is complementary on the color wheel? Hmm, red and green are across, purple and yellow, and blue and orange are across from each other on the color wheel. So if you are unsure, just take a look at the color wheel and draw a line straight through with your eyes and you'll be able to help yourself get an idea of which complementary color scheme you want to use. Now, if you feel like you don't have time to do that art activity, there is another rotational art activity playing out right now in front of us. You will need cardboard, pencil, a tack, eraser, and scissors. Draw a little shape on the cardboard. Cut it out, and let's get ready to rotate. Put your cardboard underneath your paper, Tack it down, outline your shape, rotate it, trace it again. Give it another spin. Keep tracing and turning. Your turn should be evenly spaced. You could do it half and fourths. You could also do one third rotations or one sixth rotations. When you're done, remove the tack and the cardboard from below. Make it look groovy. Color it in a snazzy way using complementary colors, please. Try different shapes. Erase the interior lines. You could fill up a whole paper with these. Turn your life around with rotational math art. And thank you to the other art teachers who allowed me to borrow their resources. We appreciate it. Have fun with rotational symmetry, everyone, and please share what you do with me on Seesaw. Take care.